Welcome back to daytime. Have you noticed your cats and dogs scratching or licking themselves a little more than usual these days? The mild spring definitely affects flea and tick activity. Now is the time to take measures to protect our furry friends from something that's totally preventable. Dr. Melissa Webster is here to talk about prevention, treatment, and symptoms. Welcome to daytime. Thank you. By the way, Thank Dr. You. Webster is my vet, and this yes. is total coincidence that she's here. I didn't book her, so I think that's fantastic. Oh, I'm glad to see you. So this. the licking is more, you'll notice that in your cats more than your dogs? Maybe? Licking and chewing because of fleas can be really common in cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. it, it, I don't necessarily see a difference, although cats, I have clients frequently can't find a flea, but you can see the cat has licked themselves bald. Oh. And especially now in the spring, Oh my God, the fleas, since we had such a mild winter, they are going crazy. And the ticks, we've already been seeing ticks and it, it's gonna happen across the whole country. Okay, so how do we spot a tick and how often do you have to check your pets for ticks? Well, I, I think a lot of us, you know, pet our animals every day. It's a great <laughs> idea, start at their nose, go all the way down the tip of their tail, go down their legs. Look in particular for ticks in between their toes mm. is a good area. Um, in between the toes. In, the, in between the toes, it's kind of frequently missed. Obviously on the top of their body, it's easier to see them. But Nigel I'm, was licking his paw yesterday over and over, oh. but I, was, I put my hands in there to mm -hmm. see if there was something in the paw, but I'm gonna have to check again Yeah, now. you are, you're gonna have yeah. to go on it. Are ticks more dangerous than fleas? I think because zoonotic disease, that's a crazy word, but the bottom line is we can get diseases from our animals and that a tick, Lyme's disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and Ehrlichia are big deals, and it can make us really sick. One of my good friends has Lyme's disease. You don't want it. No, no you, so, you don't. And, I mean, and, not so a you good can thing. you can get sick from your animals. Then, Correct. so it's just as important for you to in your mm -hmm. health um, to to check your animals. Right, and that's why we want you we want you to bring your pet to your local veterinarian, make an appointment, have a conversation with your veterinarian, with your animal there, so we can examine it and find out your lifestyle and what your expectations are, so that we can pick products that better fit your pet and your lifestyle. It's really easy, isn't it? You can get, you can almost give them two in one, or there, there uh, are multiple medications yeah. and things yes, like that. But the ticks are typically a separate medication ah. because they're a lot harder to kill and a lot more serious. If, but, oh, I'm curious because I found mm -hmm. a tick on my dog once okay. and I, I was able to get it off, mm -hmm. but they kind of burrow in, don't they? Right, they have these mouth parts and they secrete some cement that adhere to the skin and make them difficult to extract. So there are devices that you can get to help pick them off, but the bottom line, I tell people, don't do it with your bare hands, get some tweezers, put some sunglasses on if you're not so fortunate to have glasses like me, um, you know, so you can get the tick off because you don't want to use your fingers. If you have a cut in your hand and you break the tick open, you can get infected with Lyme's disease huh. or Rocky Mountain spe spotted fever, rather, at that point. Well, I had a scary. tick on me a couple of years ago, embedded mm -hmm. in, oh. and it was in a Did very unfortunate. Did you take the tweezers? It was a very, very unfortunate, unfortunate place. Let's yeah. just say here on up. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I, that was in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and then yeah, I checked I've my had, animals mm -hmm. afterwards and I found mm -hmm. multiple ticks all over them. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, and they're difficult to get off. They are difficult to get off. And then there's different sizes of ticks, so sometimes you can miss them. And a lot of people have, you know, cute dogs with longer hair coats. I can't sometimes even find the tick unless mm -hmm. I go backwards up the hair coat. Now, and fleas aren't so easy to see. They're tiny. They are hard to see. So sometimes taking a white paper towel and a comb and going by the pet's ears or above their tail area is an easier spot to find them. Or turning your pet over and looking in their abdomen or the inside of their thighs, because sometimes the hair coat's thinner there, mm -hmm. okay. so it's easier yeah. to pick up. But oh. I frequently see people that say, I don't have fleas. And I think because people feel insulted. Right, it, right, It's right. not an insult. None of us are. It happens. We're just, it happens. It's life. I mean, oh, well. Once but, your pet has fleas, though, do you have to wash all their bedding in your bedding, too? Because it d doesn't get it infested? It, well, only it five. it can. And only 5% of the flea population is the live adults that we see. I mean, the rest is down in the carpet, in the mattress and in the bedding. And so treating the environment, sometimes just washing, isn't going to get rid of them. I okay. mean, it's kind of disgusting. Prevention. I mean, like, <laughs> prevention is key. And unfortunately, a lot of people only like to prevent it when they see the problem. Right. And that's kind of coming at it backwards. And if you want to save money, big tip, keep your animal on monthly flea and tick T prevention, mm -hmm. and you won't have the diseases from you know your pet or your pet gets sick. Right, and you'll save a lot of money. And you'll <laughs> save a lot of money because the itching and the scratching. Dr. Right Webster, thank you so much for being here. We'll be right back. Thanks.